Hello everyone and welcome to chapter number 6 of Blender Master Course series Editing Objects in Blender. If you are new to this course then do watch the previous 6 chapters of this series from the link there in the pinned comment. So whenever you open Blender then by default you are in the object mode with this default cube selected and if you want to edit an object then you have to enter the edit mode. And as discussed in the previous chapters the shortcut to do that is to press tab and now we are in the edit mode. So the difference between the two modes is that in edit mode you basically work with the individual vertices to model your shape whereas in the object mode you basically change the properties of this cube as a whole to model something. Now by default the edit mode comes in the vertex select mode in which you can select the vertices by using the left mouse button click and to switch to the edge select mode press 2 on your keyboard but not from the numpad and now you can select the edges of your object by left mouse button click. Similarly, you can also enter the face select mode by pressing 3 on your keyboard and now you can select the faces using the left mouse button click. Now Blender even has an x-ray mode which you can toggle from here and it allows you to select the hidden vertices, edges and faces and there's a shortcut available for the x-ray mode also and that is to press Alt plus Z to toggle it and this one is also available in the object mode. You can enter the object mode and then press Alt plus Z to enter the x-ray mode. Now let's come back to the edit mode. So in the edit mode we can apply move, rotate and scale to the vertices, edges and faces as well. Suppose I select this vertex and press G to move it around and then I can left click to finalize the movement. Similarly if I go to the edge selection mode by pressing 2 and if I select this edge and I try to rotate it by pressing R like this. So the object is now transformed and similarly I can also go to the face select mode select this face and if I try to scale it down and now if I go to the object mode the object is now transformed now I'll return to the edit mode so there may be some occasions where you need more vertices in your object for creating details and for this blender has subdivision so suppose I've selected this face and to subdivide this face I will click right mouse button and then select subdivide from here now this face is subdivided into four parts and you can also change the number of cuts from here by increasing the number of cuts or decreasing it and if you want to delete any vertex edge of face suppose I want to delete this face so I'll select it and press X and now select face and the face will get deleted similarly if I want to delete any edge so I first have to enter the edge select mode by pressing 2 then I'll select the edge and now I'll press X to delete and I'll select edges and the edge will get deleted and the reason why the upper face is also deleted is that the edge of that face was connected with the edge that I deleted so since the shape of that face could not be completed so it also got deleted now I'll return to the object mode and I'll delete this cube and now I'll add a new cube in its place and let's also add a UV sphere let's move it in Y direction now in the object mode you can easily select any object by simply clicking on it with the left mouse button click. But suppose I select this cube here and if I enter the edit mode and now if I try to select this UV sphere I can't do that. And that's because edit mode is only for the object that I have selected before entering into the edit mode. Now the question arises how do I edit both the objects together in edit mode. And to do this we have to come in the object mode then with the box select tool I'll select both of these. And now if I enter the edit mode then I can edit both of these objects together. Now let's come back to the object mode and if you notice then every object in your scene has a dot in the center and this is the object's origin or its pivot point. To understand it let's try to rotate this cube. We observe that the cube rotates about its center point or the pivot point and that's the use of the object's origin and you can also change the position of this pivot point and to do this first place your 3D cursor at the point where you want your object's origin to be located. So let's place our 3D cursor over here using shift plus right mouse button click. Now to change the position of your object's origin from the center to where the 3D cursor is located you have to click your right mouse button while selecting this cube and then go for set origin and select origin to 3D cursor. Now your pivot point or the origin point of this cube is shifted here where the 3D cursor is located and now if you try to rotate it then it rotates like this due to the position of your pivot point and you would be using your object's pivot point in a number of different situations based on what your project is. Now the next topic for this chapter is proportional editing. So first let's remove all this and let's bring the 3D cursor back to the center of the world origin by pressing shift plus C and now we'll add a new object from mesh and the object we are going to add is the plane. Now press tab to enter the edit mode and let's suppose we want to make a mountain using this plane so for that first we need to have more vertices on this plane and so we'll subdivide it and let's increase the number of cuts 
let's keep it to 10 now to make the peak of the mountain the first thing that comes in our mind is to select one of these vertices and then move it up in the z direction like this but as we can see it doesn't actually look like a mountain the smoothness or the flow is somewhere missing in it and here comes one of the most important editing tools in blender proportional vertex editing so proportional vertex editing is basically used to create a flow in the shape while you are editing your vertices and to enable it you have to click here in the 3d view editor header and now the proportional vertex editing tool is enabled also the shortcut key to toggle proportional vertex editing is to press o in your keyboard so now let's undo this editing by pressing Ctrl plus Z and now with the proportional editing enabled if I try to move this vertex upward then you can see that it's forming a much better shape and that's because it's influencing all the vertices around the selected vertex and the circle that you are seeing is the circle of influence and all the vertices within this circle will get influenced by the change and you can use your scroll wheel to change the size of this circle and now let's finalize this by clicking left mouse button so that was about the proportional editing and now is the time for the last and the simplest topic of this chapter parenting of objects so first let's delete it and now let's add two different objects let's say one is a cube and let's add another object let's say it's a cylinder now let's move it in y direction like this so suppose you want two or more objects in your scene to act as a single object meaning that if i move this cube then the cylinder also moves with it then we use parenting now some of you might say that we can join them by pressing ctrl plus j and now if I move them, they move together. So yes, it will work. But what if I want it to be like, if I move the cube, then cylinder should move with it. But if I try to move the cylinder, then the cube should not move. And here I will have to use parenting. Now let's understand this with the help of an example. First, I'll unjoin them by pressing Ctrl plus Z. And then I'll deselect them. And now let's select this cylinder. And then by pressing Shift, I'll select this cube with a left mouse button click. Now we have to press Ctrl plus P for parenting. And we'll select object. And now the cube is the parent object of this cylinder. Which means that moving the cube will move the cylinder with it. But if I try to move the cylinder, then the cube won't move. So basically you have to remember that the object that you selected first while parenting, that is the cylinder, becomes the child. And the object that is selected later, that is this cube, it becomes the parent object. And to summarize the various concepts that we have covered till now in this series, let's start a practical session for this chapter. In the last two practical sessions, we made these two objects and in today's session, we'll be making this scene. So let's begin with it. I have deleted all the objects in my scene and we'll start with making the computer screen and its upper body. So let's first add a cube. Let's scale it down in the X axis. And let's scale it up in the Y axis a bit like this. And we should scale it down in x-axis a little bit more. Now to make it stand, we will place our 3D cursor over here. But before that, there's one more important thing. Suppose you want to view the object from a particular viewpoint, like from the top or the front. So for this, there are certain shortcuts assigned. For the front view, you have to press 1 in your numpad. It's appearing like this because the rotation of our object is not right. So let's press R, then Z and 90. And so for the front view, you have to press 1 in your numpad. For the back view, you have to press Ctrl plus 1. Similarly, for the right view, press 3 in your numpad. For left view, you have to press Ctrl plus 3. Similarly, if you want to see the top view, then you have to press 7 in your numpad. And for the bottom view, it's Ctrl plus 7. I have typed all these navigation shortcuts here. If you want, you can take a screenshot of this. Now let's come back to the front view by pressing 1 and we'll place our 3D cursor here by pressing shift plus right mouse button click. I place my 3D cursor over here so that I can make the stand for the computer. Now let's add a cylinder here. Let's scale this down. And let's scale it up in the Z axis like this. And now I'll navigate and I see that the position is not correct. So by pressing 3 on my numpad, I'll go to the right view. Now I'll press G and Y to move it in Y direction and I'll place it here. Now if I come back and see, it looks fine. Now let's return to the front view. And now I'll add a cube at the bottom of the cylinder so that the stand is complete. So I'll first place the 3D cursor over here by pressing shift plus right mouse button. And I'll add a cube. Now I'll scale it down in the Z axis. And it looks slightly bigger in size, so I'll scale it down in the Y axis and also in the X axis. Now, even if the basic structure of our computer is ready, but still it looks very simple. So for this, let's select this PC screen and let's tab into the edit mode. And now with all the vertices selected, I'll use the bevel option. And bevel basically makes the edges of your object look smooth. So let's use it to understand it. So I'll press Ctrl plus B and slightly move my cursor away. 
and to finalize I'll press left mouse button click and now if I come out of the edit mode the edges now look something like this. Now I'll join this entire computer with its stand as a single object and for that I'll press A to select all and press Ctrl plus J to join them and I'll change its name from cube to computer. Now if you remember we made this table with the Suzanne model in the chapter number 5 and I think that we should add this table in this chapter number 6 project and in this way we'll also revise the concept of appending. So to append that table we'll first go to file then append and now we have to locate our file and click on the file name then we'll go to collection and press on the collection and now the table along with the Suzanne model and the lighting setup will get added and now I'll go to the front view by pressing 1 now I'll select this computer press G and Z to move it in Z direction and I'll place it on the tabletop now I'll select the Suzanne model and hide it and now it looks good so let's enter the camera view by pressing 0 on our numpad and to adjust it we'll click on the view here then lock camera to view and now if I scroll back then the whole computer along with the table will come in our view and now let's enter the material preview mode and let's change the color of our computer so we'll go to the materials properties here then click on new and let's change its color to light blue like this but its screen should be black so I'll go to the edit mode then if I go to face select mode and select this face only and then click on the plus button here and click on assign then this particular face of the object will have a different color what I'll assign now so I clicked on new and choose the base color from here to turn it into black I'll have to decrease the brightness slider and now if I go to object mode it appears something like this now one thing that you might have noticed is that it appears very simple and the reason for that is that we have currently learned only editing objects in blender but to make it realistic and complex we'll have to learn the editing tools in blender and that we are going to cover in chapter number seven of this series now let's go to the render mode to see how it will look when we finally render it and it looks ready to be rendered but we have done one mistake here that we'll get to know after we click on the render button so let's render it and this is the rendered image we see that the Suzanne model is appearing here which means that even if we hide the Suzanne model while working on our 3d viewport it would still appear in the rendered image now suppose you want to hide the Suzanne model in your 3d viewport as well as the rendered image so you can do this by clicking on the camera button here so if I click this camera button then it will be disabled in the render also and now if I click on render image then this image is rendered in which Suzanne model does not appear and so that's all in this chapter our next lecture is gonna be on chapter number 7 editing tools and it will be the most important chapter till now because with that chapter you will begin your journey of making complex objects in blender and so don't forget to subscribe to our channel and press that notification bell so that you can get timely updates about the upcoming chapters thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one